Hi, I'm Ron Watson, pastor of First Presbyterian Church here in beautiful Ocala, Florida. It is my distinct pleasure today to welcome you to our Easter Sunday services. And let me greet you first with the ancient ritual greeting, He is risen, He is risen indeed. I'm so glad you could join us for our broadcast today where we will get to share the special Easter message in so many different ways. I have a reminder that our youth will be having their first evening meeting since COVID began on April the 11th. Uh, that'll be a week from today, Sunday night. Casey will have more about that in a minute. And we will have an upcoming food drive in the month of May. We'll hear more about that later in the coming weeks. We're so glad you could worship with us this Easter morning. Welcome to church. Good morning. Happy Easter. Please join me for the call to worship. Early in the morning light, the women went to Jesus' tomb. The tomb was empty. The stone rolled away. For God's love is stronger than death itself. Let us join our voices with Mary Magdalene. We have seen the Lord. Easter people, Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed.
Jesus Christ is risen today. Please join me for a prayer of confession of sin. O oh God, you raised Christ from the tomb and shattered the powers of sin and evil. Raise us from the tombs of our sin, O oh Lord, and bring us to new life in you. You bring us good news of Easter joy. Forgive us when we cannot hear it. You send us out to share your love. Forgiven when we cannot carry it. You cast a vision for peace and justice. Forgive us when we cannot imagine it. Forgive us when we stand in its way. For you are the God of the empty tomb, the one who makes all things new. I invite you to silent prayer. He is risen. He is risen indeed. This is good news. In the name of Jesus, we are forgiven. Amen. Good morning and happy Easter. To get started today, I'm going to make some animal noises, and I want you to tell me what animals those noises belong to. Ready? Moo. Yes, a cow. Meow. A cat, yes. Ba. Great, a sheep. Last one. Oof, oof. That's right, a dog. Great guessing. Since I don't look like any of those four animals, how did you know the noise I was making matched up with the type of animal? 
That's right. You knew the sounds. A fancy word we use to describe your knowing of these animal sounds is recognize. You recognize those sounds I made. And the reason you're able to recognize those sounds is because you know a lot about these animals and sounds, right? Another way to say it, say it would be to say that you are familiar with the four animals and that's why you can recognize the sounds that they make. I bring this up because in today's Bible story, we hear about Mary's first meeting with Jesus after his resurrection. And one thing to know about resurrected Jesus is that he somehow looks different than he did before his resurrection. We know this because Mary doesn't recognize him right away. But what we hear in the story is that resurrected Jesus sounds the same. So when Jesus says Mary's name, do, do you know what happens? That's right. Mary recognized resurrected Jesus by how he spoke to her, by how he said her name. For the same reason that you were able to recognize certain animals without seeing them, Mary was able to recognize Jesus by the way he said her name. What resurrection is and what it means is not easily or quickly understood. Mary in today's story helps us understand that the more familiar we are with Jesus, the easier it is to recognize resurrection and resurrected Jesus. This is a good reminder then of one of the reasons for why we choose to regularly read and talk about Jesus' stories as a way for us to become more familiar with him, his actions, and what he taught. And the more familiar Jesus is to us, the better we will be at recognizing and understanding resurrection and the resurrected Jesus, just like Mary was. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, today on Easter, we thank you so much for the resurrected Jesus. And thank you so much that he died to save us from our sins. Be with us as we learn to be familiar with Jesus and to recognize and find him in our lives every day. In your name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Sunday night youth group is back. And we're going to kick it off the best way we know how with a party. On April 11th, we will be having a spring fling on the sports field. Middle schoolers will be from 5 o'clock to 6.30, and high schoolers from 6 o'clock to 7.30. There's going to be games, food, and of course fellowship, and I'm looking forward to seeing all of you middle and high schoolers there. The Day of Resurrection Tell it out abroad The Passover of gladness The Passover of God From death to life eternal From sin's dominion free Our Christ has brought us over With hymns of victory now let the heavens be joyful, let earth its song begin. The round world keep high triumph, and all that is therein. Let all things seen and unseen their notes of gladness blend, for Christ the Lord has joy that has no end. In our first Bible reading, Peter is speaking with Roman soldiers who wanted to know about Jesus. This is from Acts 10. Then Peter began to speak to them. I truly understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation, anyone who fears him and does what's right and acceptable to him. 
You know the message he sent to the people of Israel, preaching peace by Jesus Christ. He is Lord of all. That message spread throughout Judea, beginning in Galilee, after the baptism that John announced. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. How he went out about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. We are witnesses to all that he did, both in Judea and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and allowed him to appear, not to all people, but to us who were chosen by God as witnesses, and who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. He commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one ordained by God as judge of the living and the dead. All the prophets testify about him, that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. As we gather for prayer, I have only one announcement. Um, as I record this midweek, Bill Bowen of our church is very ill in hospice care. And his son, Jim, and I have talked this week, and um, Bill's passing is, is imminent. There are still others, as we always pray for folks with a variety of illnesses and, and grief and hardships. Continue to pray for one another. Let's go to God in prayer. Father God, indeed, we come in prayer this Easter, grateful for Jesus and the story of his life and death and resurrection. For this Easter Sunday miracle, O oh Lord, changes it all, changes it for our lives and for this world. It gives us the ability to risk, knowing that Jesus has paid our price, paid in full. We can uh, risk being a servant for him, caring for one another. Help us to do that as we celebrate Easter. We've seen a lot of service and servants this year. It's been a terrible year of pandemic, but we're grateful. We're grateful for farmers and farm workers, folks who drive the trucks and, and, and drive the ships that bring goods from around the world. There are many who seemed unimportant, like ships pilots, that we realize are very important. We pray for so many who make our country, our system, our free enterprise work so smoothly, each one doing their part. Lift them up and pray for them, especially for folks who practice the healing arts. I pray for those in science. I'm grateful for the vaccinators who put the shots in the arms Army medics working in a FEMA tent across the state, pharmacists and others brought into service, nurses and retired nurses and others. I'm grateful for all of them. We pray for folks in government, elected and appointed, employed leaders near and far, civil servants and others. We realize their importance, O oh Lord, and lift them up and pray for them, for teachers and administrators and so many more that make our schools run. Lord, we are grateful and we pray for them. We pray for folks in our church, for those who are dying, for those who are grieving, for those who are recovering. I, I lift them up. Lastly, Lord, I pray for folks far away, folks on station in dangerous places, Marines and sailors, airmen and soldiers, their officers and others. Bless them and bring them home safely. We pray in the name of Jesus with the prayer he taught us. 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen.
Thank you for your support of First Presbyterian Church here in Ocala. Today we will also be collecting a special offering called the One Great Hour of Sharing offering. You can read more about it on our website. Let us pray. Merciful and gracious God, we celebrate resurrection today. We celebrate love and life and grace. Help us to share these with the world that the risen Christ may be known, that his love for all may be shared, and that the ministry he put into motion may continue. Amen. Our gospel lesson this morning is John's Gospel, chapter 20, verses 1 through 18. Hear the word of the Lord. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene came to the tomb and saw that the stone had been removed from the tomb. So she ran and went to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one whom Jesus loved, and said to them, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb, and we do not know where they have laid him. Then Peter and the other disciple set out and went toward the tomb. The two were running together, but the other disciple outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent down to look in and saw the linen wrappings lying there. But he did not go in. Then Simon Peter came, following him, and went into the tomb. He saw the linen wrappings lying there, and the cloth that had been on Jesus' head, not lying with the linen wrappings, but rolled up in a place by itself. Then the other disciple, who reached the tomb first, also went in, and he saw and believed. For as yet they did not understand the scripture, that he must rise from the dead. Then the disciples returned to their homes. But Mary stood weeping outside the tomb. As she wept, she bent over to look into the tomb, and she saw two angels in white, sitting where the body of Jesus had been lying, one at the head and the other at the feet. They said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? She said to them, They have taken away my Lord, and I do not know where they have laid him. When she had said this, she turned around and saw Jesus standing there. But she did not know that it was Jesus. Jesus said to her, Woman, why are you weeping? Whom are you looking for? Supposing him to be the gardener, she said to him, Sir, if you have carried him away, tell me where you have laid him, and I will take him away. Jesus said to her, Mary. She turned and said to him in Hebrew, Rabuni, which means teacher. Jesus said to her, Do not hold on to me, because I have not yet ascended to the Father. But go to my brothers and say to them, I am ascending to my Father and your Father to my God and your God. Mary Magdalene went and announced to the disciples, I have seen the Lord. And she told them that he had said these things to her. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Hope to you and me from the past. 
past will come the future what it holds a mystery unrevealed until it sees and something god alone can see in our end is our beginning in our time infinity in our doubt there is believing in our life eternity in our death Something God alone can see. Resurrection Story. Just four years ago, at the ripe age of 117, Emma Morano died. She was born November 29, 1899, and believed to have been the last surviving person in the world who was born in the 1800s, and one of the very few people to have lived in three different centuries. She ate a raw egg every day along with two cooked ones, and credited her longevity to her diet that and a sip of strong liquor every day. Some doctors had warned her against eating three eggs daily, but she ignored their advice. Her doctor said, from a strictly medical and scientific point of view, she can be considered a phenomenon. She never set foot inside a hospital. She kept a rosary beads next to the picture of her only son, who had died in infancy a picture that she had buried with her. She had that picture buried with her as a symbol of them being reunited, a reunion that took almost 100 years. When I think of Easter, I think of all the people I love that are not here, but have, have experienced resurrection, thanks to the resurrection of Jesus on Easter morning, which all the saints share both the living and those who have gone before us. I thank God for the invisible but mighty act raising Jesus from the dead to conquer all things, especially sin and death. We might see the visible power of God in acts of nature, whether it is a burning red sunrise, being drenched by pouring spring rains, or the mere after effects of nature's wrath. I saw these one time on my visit to Mount St. Helens. As I crossed a bridge that spanned the spot where the pyroclastic flow had moved the mountain, I saw the effects of what I had witnessed on television my senior year of high school in 1980. God had, with the power of 24 megatons of TNT, pulverized a mountain and simply washed it away. Such is the stark beauty of the natural world and the way God works in it with awesome power. Easter is the supernatural world where God breaks God's own natural rules, namely that death is a permanent thing and that no one may escape it. The rule change comes in the form of two angels waiting to talk to a woman who has lost the man she has lived for, that she would die for that she didn't want to believe would be executed for his teachings and sayings. She just wanted the body of her Lord back so she could finish his proper burial. We find the story of the resurrection in the midst of heavy grief. Jesus has been executed as a criminal with real criminals on crosses and buried hastily in a borrowed but heavily guarded tomb. His body has been buried on the day of death in keeping with tradition, but more time was needed to complete the process and the Sabbath itself had made them wait an extra day. Any one of us who has been with a loved one who has passed on knows the intense grief of being with them one last time 
to get things in order. What does Mary Magdalene find instead? She finds two angels dressed in white, ready to give her unbelievable news. When do we get to see the angels? Angels are referenced many times in the Gospels, especially by Jesus himself. But it starts with Joseph, who, who gets instructions from angels three times when Mary is visited by an angel, telling her that she will give birth to Jesus. Angels come to wait on a starving Jesus after temptation. Jesus talks about angels, saying they will separate righteous and unrighteous. They will do their work at the side of Jesus. They will return with Jesus. Jesus says he can call on 12 legions of angels, and they will come when he calls. In John, however, though angels are mentioned over 50 times in all the Gospels, angels appear only at the end here to deliver a message to a woman who is out of her mind with grief. The one thing that she still had of Jesus, his lifeless body, had in her mind been stolen. Imagine how profound her grief. But these angels have come with a message. They are literally placeholders at this time in the Gospel story. They are filling out a spot and place in time, sitting on that holy spot where the body of our Lord had been a place in a rocky tomb. They sat to deliver a message, which they never quite give. They only get to ask Mary a question, which must have had an obvious answer. Woman, why are you weeping? But their presence, when remembered with Jesus and his connection with the angels, must let her know, must let us all know, that the risen Lord is near. The angels do not appear to Peter and the disciple whom Jesus loved, as, as far as we know. They are not needed in John's telling of the story, apparently. But they are needed here, in a moment of the most profound grief, to give this amazing and surprise message, a surprise which Jesus had told them about repeatedly. But they hadn't figured it out yet. They gave the news with one rhetorical question. Why are you weeping? Well, why is she weeping? The one thing that she cared about on this earth is gone. And the body of the one thing, not the man, but his body, the last thing she had left of him is gone as well. Her grief has doubled. The last thing that she could ever do for him will never be done. Have you had such finality in your life? Have you had that one act that you never got to finish or that one thing that you wish you'd said that you now could never say? Think about that and you will understand what Mary Magdalene felt that day. Two angels dressed in white, seated at the head and foot of the place where the body of Jesus lay, could not comfort her. Here is the good news though. Jesus himself could. Jesus was there. Jesus was alive. And Jesus was not the gardener, which is about the only person you would expect to be around a graveyard on the first day of a work week. You may notice just a bit of variation of this story from the other Easter accounts. Not great variation, but it is there all the same. And looking for verification, I find the variations comforting. After all, each account tells pretty much the same story. But each gospel writer who presents a different point of view sees things a bit differently. One thing is clear. The empty tomb in John's gospel is not really empty. Perhaps that would suspiciously look like the work of grave robbers. Instead, we find two seated angels dressed in white. They are the placeholders of a living Christ. They come to tell the story which is the surprise ending to the crucifixion. They are present to tell Mary Magdalene that Jesus is no longer dead, but risen. Immediate recognition is difficult also, simply because Mary is now looking at the risen Lord. He has changed, just as we will all be changed in our new life. In our house, we, 
have two three-letter words which have been banished from usage for all time, namely A-G-E and O-L-D. We must not say, use, or relate anything to these two words. Even still, being changed into something better has great appeal to me. If you are O-L-D-E-R, than I am, perhaps you also see the appeal. Jesus has not only won the victory over death, in Jesus we also have a new life, a new existence, something much younger and better. Of course, all of this would sound too good to be true if we had not gone through the agony of Good Friday, the agony of God, the feeling of desperate separation between the Son and Father is the reminder that the free gift of grace received on Easter Sunday came with the highest cost ever paid, the very death of God on Good Friday. But friends, the price was paid. Salvation is at hand. Death has lost its sting. Our sins are forgiven. Life is a part of its promise for those who believe in the death and resurrection of a son have been able to share in both his death and resurrection dead to sin and alive with Christ forevermore. Hallelujah. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. Let us affirm our faith using the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Without thee, may I 
And now, may the God of peace, who through the blood of the eternal covenant brought back from the dead our Lord Jesus, that great shepherd of the sheep, equip you with everything good for doing his will. And may he work in us what is pleasing to him, through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Happy Easter. Go in peace.